Welcome back. Well, we just heard from Treasury Board President Tony Clement with an update on the government's concerted campaign to cut billions from the federal budget to get Canada out of deficit. But how should the government prioritize those cuts? And in the face of a conservative majority, what, if anything, can the opposition do to influence the government's decisions? Joining me from Montreal is the NDP revenue critic, Wang Mai, second time on the show this week. Appreciate it, Wang. Thank and you. in Toronto is Treasury uh, Board critic for the Liberals, John McCallum. And he's, had, uh, he's done an awful lot of work on this kind of issue before. So let's start with you, John, because I was looking at one of your reports that you did. Uh, so I guess it was in early 2000, 2003, if I'm not mistaken, where you were looking to identify uh, places to make cuts. Uh, what what <coughs> what suggestions would you give to Mr. Clement as he looks for four billion dollars in savings as to how to go about doing this? I think ours was two thousand four five, okay. and we found eleven billion dollars of savings over five years, which is a similar amount to what the government is looking for. And every item of that cut was in the two thousand and five budget, so it's a similar process. And what I would say is, you have to make sure it's fair. You have to have a regional lens because uh, civil servants will tend to focus cuts uh, in the regions where the jobs are often most needed. Mm -hmm. You have to go against that. And you have to get serious input from the civil servants or else they'll propose cutting musical rides and silly things of that nature. So we came up with that. Well, there was hardly any attention paid to it because there was hardly any protest. Mm -hmm. I think we succeeded in finding $11 billion of savings, mainly through making programs more efficient rather than uh, firing people. But the one caveat at Rosemary I'd have today is that as of now, the world economy is in turmoil. Stock markets are crashing. More and more people are thinking the world is going back into recession, the so-called double dip. Mm -hmm. So I would say the circumstances now are different from 2005 in that the government has to have a plan B in its back pocket. Because for all we know, six months from now, when the budget is delivered, the world will be in recession, unemployment will be shooting up, and so the last thing we would want to do at that time is have cuts in government spending and make the economy even weaker. So I'm not saying that's going yeah. to be the case, yeah. but we have so much uncertainty. You have to be prudent, you have to be flexible, and you have to be prepared not to do these cuts if the economy turns out to be a lot worse than we're t expecting today. Although, Wong, it seems like everyone is preparing <clears throat> for cuts, whether it be the United States, the city of Toronto, or, or here nationally. Everyone is, is coming up with plans to save money. So what, what do you think Tony Clement needs to look at uh, or consider uh, from, from what you heard in that interview? Well, one thing that we have to make sure is that he has to be more transparent. Mm -hmm. There was, there's, uh, we're talking about cuts being made, programs looking, but there's no, I, we don't have any criteria yet as to who and how we're going to have the cuts made. I, I do believe that things can be more efficient. Yes, it's our, uh, so yes, you can have cuts, but again, we have to be, have a more transparent. We have to know what, uh, what to expect and also how the cuts are being made and uh, which which program do we choose? So, because yeah. right now what we have we have a we have a government that is making cuts, but really it's a more ideological uh, ideological cuts than really what we need. Well, Wong, given that you don't know where they're going to make the cuts, how does the official opposition influence the government's decisions uh, in terms of where they make them? I, it seems to me that's going to be pretty impossible for you to have any sort of influence or put any pressure on them. Well, our, our idea is always has been to work with the government. So we're going to try to work with the government to try to get the uh, more information on how the cuts will be made. There are committees. There are ways of really trying to bring forward. If uh, if the government doesn't really work with us, mm -hmm. then we'll have to uh, you know make it make it come out and just say well, yeah. uh, protest against some of the cuts that you know you 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 know today with the announcement some cuts have, have been made and we'll. Uh, We'll have to, uh, to, to announce that those cuts are not good cuts. Right, okay, and we'll talk about those in a minute. Yeah. But, J John McCallum, let me go back to you. When, when you had that report, did you make that public? Or, uh, I mean, are you, are you quite, I'm sort of wondering if the government should be making the, the pu process more public as well, as Wong's mentioning, because we're going to be talking about and speculating about this for months, and we're not going to know anything until uh, March, foreseeably, when the budget is tabled. Well, to be honest, Rosie, uh, we didn't say much before the budget was produced. <laughs> when the I budget appreciate was produced, the honesty, John. <laughs> when the budget was produced, every single item was there yeah. in detail for everybody to observe. But I don't think we pre-announced things. But I could 
going back to what you said earlier in terms of being transparent, we don't object to the principle. But if you look at the information technology cuts, for example, yes. if you go back just over a year and the Auditor General said this needed to be done, the uh, consolidation of in, uh, information technology. But she also said it would cost $2 billion to implement it just for three departments. And Tony Clement was silent about that. So, yes, in the long run, there are savings, and it's a good thing to do. But to implement a massive new system, there will be costs of implementation in the billions. Yeah, so one didn't. thing we want to do yeah. is call Tony Clement to the Government Operations Committee when Parliament resumes and ask him about that, because there are always major upfront implementation costs with new informa information technology projects. Sure, and I, and I did say to him, it didn't sound, you know, you, you wouldn't automatically think that you can save money by creating a new agency, but you're, you're right, he didn't get into that. Wong, let me get to the Environment Canada cuts, which are actually not part of the $4 billion strategic review Tony Clement is starting. They're, they're part of a previous review. 700 employees are going to lose their jobs. Uh, 400 retire, and, and 300 others, including meteorologists and scientists, will just lose their positions. How concerned are you about the nature of those cuts and, and, and the department where they are uh, focused on? Well, we, I am very concerned. We're talking about Environment Canada. Right now, we're, we're, we're trying to go towards a greener economy. We're trying to uh, protect also the health and have a cleaner, uh, healthier Canada. And you have uh, Environment Canada being cut, jobs being cut. We have scientists, you have uh, chemists, uh, you have engineers. So those are, are good jobs, and those are jobs to protect the environment. On the other hand, you have uh, uh, Environment Minister, who's more a lobby for the big oil companies. So again, it is kind of, uh, you can see the ideology of the Conservative government trying to really push, you know, le give less information to the population regarding the status of where we are right now in terms of climate change, in terms of environment. So uh, let's not forget the, the idea is to protect uh, the, the, the safety of Canadians with the environment. And also when we shift our economy towards a greener economy, we have to have, those are jobs that are really important. And what's going to happen is that those jobs are, you know, the, we'll have a brain drain. We'll have uh, chemists and engineers going elsewhere where they can find better jobs. Well, John, I, will it be that we don't have those people doing jobs anymore? Or will those jobs be done uh, provincially or in private companies? Maybe the government is just saying we don't, need as, we don't need that many people in our department doing that work for us. We can find other ways to get it. Well, I don't think that will magically materialize unless the government pays for it, and that would defeat the whole purpose of the exercise. So I think you can assume that things they don't do won't get done. And I agree, this is a pure triumph of ideology over science and evidence. And it reminds me of the long-form census. For ideological reasons, they abolished that because they didn't want the valuable information it provided. Similarly, in the environment, they're, they're firing meteorologists and scientists because they don't really believe in climate change, because they don't attach a high importance to clean water, clean air. And all of these things are vital to Canadians, particularly mm -hmm. meteorologists. I don't know where else in the government they would be employed, but clearly there are more extreme weather events. It was a big issue in Newfoundland five mm -hmm. years ago. Stephen Harper boasted of increasing the number of meteorologists, and now he's got a majority government. He's letting them go. I think this could impose real hardships uh, on a... Canadians across the country. Okay, gentlemen, thanks. I know that we're going to talk about this a lot more in the weeks and months ahead. Appreciate uh, both of your perspectives. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Rosie. John McCallum and Huang Mai.